our scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 42. You have heard that it is said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Narinig ninyo ang sinabi, mata sa mata, at ngipin sa ngipin, datapwat, sinasabi ko sa inyo, huwag kayong makilaban sa masasamang tao, kundi sa sinumang sa inyo ay sumampal sa kanan mong pisngi, iharap mo naman sa kanya ang kabila. At sa mag-ibig na ikaw ay pagsakdal at kunin sa iyo ang iyong tunika, ay iwan mo rin naman sa kanya ang iyong balabal. At sa sinumang pipilit sa iyo na ikaw ay lumakad ng isang milya, ay lumakad ka ng dalawang milya na kasama niya. Bigyan mo ang sa iyo ay humihingi at huwag mong talikdan ang sa iyo ay nangungutang. The Lord has already blessed us upon the reading of His Word. Magandang umaga mga kapatid ko kay Kristo. Tayo ay sumusunod pa rin sa ating sermon series na ating pinamagatang Sermon on the Mount. Habang lumalalim po tayo sa ating pag-aaral sa Salita ng Diyos in the area of righteousness, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to convict us and empower us on this powerful teaching of true righteous, righteousness. And we know that this is never achievable by anyone without the power of Him who required it from us. In the previous lesson, we understood that in the eyes of God, murder was already committed the moment you hated your brother or sister. And also adultery is already committed in the heart the moment anyone looks at a woman lustfully. And that marriage is not ended even though a man gives a divorce certificate to his wife. Because in the eyes of God, marriage or marriage vows are binding. And last Sunday, we also understood the power of a released word. And Jesus taught us that oaths are sacred to God. That is why we should not even swear an oath at all. So righteousness in this aspect is about integrity in our word. At sa araw na ito, we will learn the fifth area on how to embrace true righteousness. And I believe ito din ay isang mahirap na pagsasalarawan ni Jesus sa katwiran ng Diyos. Because it talks about how we respond to those who do evil to us. That we should refuse to retaliate. So our message today is entitled, Refusing Retaliation. But then again, over the generations, katulad ng kanilang mga common misinterpretation sa mga katuruan o kautusan ng Diyos, ito din ay lalo nilang hindi rin naintindihan. Kung ating balikan mga kapatid, God gave three sets of laws for His people, Israel, so that they may live right and in harmony within the community of God. They are the moral laws, the civil laws, and the ceremonial laws. So the moral laws, or the Ten Commandments, are the overarching, the highest category of, of laws. In fact, they are the basis from which the ceremonial laws and the civil laws originated. The priests are to take care of the ceremonial law so that there will be order in the temple court of God, while the judges are to take care of the civil laws so that Israel would live in the community with harmony. Now, there are many details under the civil laws, and we even find the words or the phrase, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Marahil para sa iba, sa atin, Napaka-strange ang kautusang ito. But yes, the purpose of this was actually used for the judges in solving the civil cases brought before them to exact retribution in a fair and right way and should only be meant to provide limited punishment and never for use of, for any private citizen. And this should lead us to a problem because human nature desires retaliation. Kaya hindi po yun pwedeng gamitin para sa individual 
na gustong uh, magretaliate sa nagkasala sa kanya o nakasakit sa kanya. Kasi kung ganti ang pag-uusapan mga kapatid, it is our nature na di po yun sinusukat. That is why retaliation is never encouraged in the Bible. When you retaliate, you don't think rightly anymore. So God assigned the judges to do that for you. And this belongs under the civil laws that God provided to preserve order in the community. The eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth is both technical and literal term para masukat ng tama na tama lang din ang kabayaran sa mga offense sa isang tao, ng isang tao. You know, sa ibang lugar, kung ganti ang pag-uusapan, marahil dito rin sa Pilipinas, ubusan po ng lahi. And I think this problem is being rooted in our being too much conscious of our rights sa ating mga karapatan. Palagi silang masagi lang or maaapakan lang ng konti ang kanilang karapatan o maaalman. You know? You know, today, we live in a time na nilagay ng tao ang kanyang karapatan sa isang pedestal. To the extent that kung ang mga liberals ang patuturuin mo sa Bible, they would accuse God of violating human rights when He commanded the Israelites to kill their enemies as they move and advance toward the promised land. Ganun po ang pagkaintindi nila. Napakataas, napakatayog dapat ng human rights. Paano naman daw yung karapatan ng ibang bansa na nasasagaan ng Israel habang sila ay pumapasok sa kanilang lupang pangako? Yung ibang tao, yung mga bata na namatay, na walang kamalay-malay. But these people, you know, they fail to teach that God has the highest right to His own creation. And today we have so many right advocates, including animal rights. Imagine. Not that this is wrong, and please don't misinterpret it. In fact, I commend people doing things like this, especially those who help yung mga inaapit, mga tinutulungan nila. Dahil ito ay inutos din ng Panginoon. What is is what is being emphasized here is that when left unchecked, our rights can become our gods. Na ating sinasamba, iniingatan, at kapag rights na ang apiktado, you know, palagi tayong nagagalit, umaalma tayo. Kaya nga, our definition of good movie is that the villain or yung mga kontrabida should suffer at the end of the movie. They should die at the end. At nagagalit tayo kung ang kontrabida ay hindi namatay. You know, some years ago, maybe 10 or 20 years ago, the director of a famous teleserye had to do a very gruesome and a very dramatic ending of the villain doon sa kontrabida. Kasi tingin nila, magagalit ang mga tao kung hindi nila ayusin ang ending na ito. So sa sobrang galing umarte ng kontrabida upang galitin yung mga view- viewers gabi-gabi, kailangan makaganti ng mabuti ang bida. So ang ginawa ng director, binago niya ang plot upang makitang doon sa ending, matakaladkad, masunog ang mukha, at kung ano pa ang mangyari doon sa kontrabidang ito bago mamatay. And true enough, when people were interviewed after that series, they were satisfied. And many people have this kind of spirit in them. The people began to live in the basis of their rights. Meron tayong konsepto na hindi tayo dapat magpalamang. Yes, our sense of justice are innate in us because we were made in the image of God. But you know what? In the fall of man, justice, our sense of justice became perverted into a vengeful spirit. Our sense of justice talks about destruction, talks about self-preservation, at hanggang nandyan nakikita ko ang nakaapak sa aking karapatan, di ako mapalagay. Nung hindi lang tinanggap ang offering ni Cain, at ang kanyang kapatid tinanggap ng Diyos, pinatay ni Cain si Abel. More than jealousy, it is his right to be accepted that was denied at binaling niya sa kanyang kapatid at kanya itong pinatay. Basically, that's what in the heart of, of us, not only for the Jewish misconception of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but that's the way that being applied in Jesus' time and also in our time today. Probably. It had become a license for vengeance 
It had become a base. It had become a basis for vendetta. It had become a sort of biblical permission to have a grudge or to strike back. At ito ang bas basis nila in Leviticus 24. Anyone who takes the life of a human being is to be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution, life for life. Anyone who endures their neighbor is to be injured in the same manner. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The one who has inflicted the injury must suffer the same injury. Although this mosaic law clearly advocates limited retaliation, which is also only to be handled by the judges themselves. But we see that Jesus is calling the kingdom people to a righteousness that is greater than the Pharisees and religious leaders. And this is our principle today, that we should resist our nature to retaliate. You know, Jesus is motivating us to refuse retaliation, instead to resist an evil person. In Matthew 5.39, But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. This teaching of Jesus is meant to motivate us to a higher and better option. But let us make it clear before we go any farther, that Jesus is not advocating here a total lying down before anyone who would attack us. At atin po itong makikita mamaya sa susunod na mga illustrations din Jesus. He did not also intend to give anything to anyone who asked of us. Dahil alam naman natin that the Bible upholds law and order. That all throughout the Bible, God exalts the law. God made society to be lawful. The Apostle Paul emphasized, in fact, in his letter in Romans 13, Verse 1, he said, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. In fact, you read the minor prophets and you will hear God over and over indicting Israel for unjust judges, for unlawful acts, for iniquities in their nation. Nagagalit ang Panginoon kung hindi nasusunod ang batas. Because law is an essential thing. In Amos 5.24, But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. So hanggat maaari, umiwas sa gulo. In other words, we let the law do its duty to serve you justice. Yes, Jesus talks about forgiveness. But it is not to the detriment of what is lawful. Dahil meron ding instances na dahil ayaw natin sa gulo, hinahayaan na lang natin ang isang injustice to continue hanggat ito ay naging large scale at ang hirap ng ayusin. You know, there is balance here. Jesus himself resisted evil on several occasions. Sometimes by keeping silent and just walking out of the crowd, but sometimes speaking sharply based on truth to those who sought to manipulate him. Jesus doesn't teach mere passive resistance. And in the same way, we defend ourselves when in danger, for example, because this is human instinct. Kung may mangagaw ng iyong property, you don't just give simply all your property to anyone who's, who is suing you. God has instituted laws to protect us from such events. When somebody commits a crime against you, we just don't say all right and let him go or go free dahil yung taong yun ay sisirain niya ang community. It is the role of the law to do its work because that preserves society and it exalts God. So we see that there's a beautiful balance here. And in fact, when you see justice being served equitably, it has a great effect on the society. Look at those countries, mga kapatid, that have stern laws na kahit si Garillo o Babulgam ay bawal. Di ba ang linis nila at ang yaman nila? Not that that is the only way to get, to get rich as a nation, pero tingnan natin ang verse na ito and let us check its wisdom. You must purge the evil from among you. The rest of the people will hear of this and be afraid and never again 
will such an evil thing be done among you. Show no pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. There is no place in a law court for pity. The law demands justice. You know, if society is to be preserved, there must be justice. You free a sinful man and destructive man and give him his right back, tingnan natin kung hindi magkagulo ang isang komunidad. Because that man will surely cause chaos. That is why in the training of our children, if there are no consequences in the behavior of our children, they will never learn what it means to live a righteous life. Before Paul was writing Romans 13, which is about respecting and being willing to submit to the law or government, he gave Romans 12 as a response on resisting evil on a personal level. And he said, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but give room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. But kung talagang evil at hindi mapaawat ang isang tao, then let the law deal with it. Total, ang law ay galing sa Panginoon. The law itself is God's equitable answer to punish the wrongdoers. But here is another option that Jesus himself modeled for all of us. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So this two works together. While allowing the law to do its duty, we also have a duty to do, which is to forgive and show forgiveness and kindness to the person who committed the crime. And this should bring us to our promise that power will come as you decide to do God's will. What Jesus would have to say in the next verses will be shocking to us as it was to his original audience 2,000 years ago. But then again, what is impossible with man is possible with God, and only through the power of his death and resurrection can all this be possible. Because only those who have been regenerated and who experience the grace of God, they have the ability to turn the other cheek when they slap, so to speak. So in Matthew 5, it says here, If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. So how far can you go with this scenario here? You know, kung sinampal ka sa isang kanang, sa iyong kanang pisngi, Assuming na right-handed ang nagsampal sa iyo, ibig sabihin po, sinampal ka sa talikuran ng iyong kamay. No? Hindi po sa harap. In the ancient world, this type of slap was more of an insult and offense than doing so with the palm of one's hand. It is only the most demeaning, contemptuous, and arrogant person will slap you with the back of his hand. In fact, in the Roman world and context, a slave would rather receive a whip o yung latay, latigo, than to receive a slap with the back of his master's hand. Because that means you do not have dignity. In other words, when your dignity is taken away, when you are dishonored, when you are arrogantly humiliated, let him do it again. Turn the other cheek. That's what it means. Be slapped again before you would ever think to retaliate. You know, hindi man tayo sampalin ng ganon in real life in order to be insulted, pero nangyayari po ito sa ibang kaparaanan. With words, slander, gossip, and many more. So Jesus wants us free from resentment and bitterness so that kung na-insulto man tayo, meron pang lugar sa isang sa pisngi natin, sa isang pisngi, upang pwede pa tayong sampalin. May lugar pa sa ating puso na isang manam, mananampalataya na mainsulto pa o mahiya pa o makutya pa. Gaw, gagawin man ito pa ulit-ulit. When Jesus was teaching this, He was actually looking forward to the day when He would be called horrible names. Remember, He was called working for Beelzebul after He drove out the evil spirit of a man who was blind and mute. And then people mocked Him, insulted Him. And on His crucifixion day, 
people spat upon him. They bound him and shamed him in front of many people. Yet Jesus possessed complete control of himself with ultimate dignity and did not respond to retaliation. Instead, his words were, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So what's in the other chick that we cannot give? When the same Holy Spirit who is in Jesus Christ is the same counselor, advocate, and who is in control of us, you can surely go beyond your right cheek. And then Jesus continues to teach on the next verse, and if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt and hand over your coat as well. In this next illustration, Jesus is teaching us how to respond to wrongful attacks on our possessions. Kung idedemanda ka over a shirt, ibibigay mo rin pati ang yung coat. Now, Jesus is not talking about large-scale items here, but he uses this illustration of a shirt, or in another translation, a tunic, a very cheap clothing that even a very poor person can have. Now, the tunic is the inner garment that a poor or a person will wear, and the outer garment, which is more expensive, is the coat, or they call it also cloak. And according to the Mosaic Law in Exodus 22, verse 26, if you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, return it by sunset. Now, the coat is the one possession that a creditor could not legally seize from a debtor. Kung nakakautang ka at wala kang pambayad, at pwede mong isangla ang coat mo, hindi pwede itong masangla overnight. Kailangang ibalik sa kanya. When used as a collateral, it has to be returned before night. And yet, Jesus is saying that even that, if he sued you for your tunic, give your cloak. Now, this is again a radical example because in the context of Israelite or Israelite court, social responsibility is being stressed in their law. Ang sabi, because that cloak is the only covering your neighbor has. What else can they sleep in? When they cry out to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. Kapag kinuha mo ito sa kanya, lagot ka sa Diyos. Tiyak, pakikindagan ng Diyos ang kanyang sumbong sa taong tinanggalan mo ng kahit kanyang masusuot. And for us, this is our assurance that we can actually respond with confidence to anyone even in the matters of possessions because our hope is in the Lord. He will defend us and who will prepare us not only with things that are material, but things also that are eternal. So rather than the trouble of, or trouble of going to court over a tunic, give it to them and throw in the cloak also. Smile at them, go home and sleep peacefully. This kind of attitude will let you sleep at night. Remember, you have so much as promised to you by the Father, and you don't trouble defending yourself over a tunic. Now, Jesus is teaching another radical response in the next verse. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Now, during those times when a Roman soldier or Roman soldiers were walking on the road and came across a group of people or individual, you know, they have the right, especially when they were carrying heavy loads, they actually have the right or authority to compel o pwede nilang utusan ang sino man para kargahin ang kanilang mga dala-dala, but only limited for one mile. One example of this in the scripture is Simon of Cyrene. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. Now, when Jesus was weary and he was unable to carry it on his back all the way to Golgotha, this man was compelled to carry the cross. So the extra mile could be many things to us. Favor, pasuyo, wala naman tong kinalaman sa akin. And doing so almost always include a reluctant and complaining spirit. But Jesus is teaching that when anyone or an enemy, for that matter, ask you to do a task, do so without complaining. In fact, doblehin mo ang request niya out of a cheerful spirit. Wow! 
But this is exactly what Jesus has done for us, right? If only Jesus went the first mile for us, we'd be in real trouble. But he carried our burden far beyond so that he, he even died for us. And as if it's not yet enough, he provided us and supplied us with grace upon grace upon grace without ending through the Holy Spirit so that even in the midst of our repeated mistakes and weaknesses, we are able to stand and go. And with this grace, we should extend to anyone who asks of it to be with them not only for one mile or two mile or three mile, but even more. And lastly, Matthew 5.42 Give to the one who asks you and do not turn from, any, from the one who wants to borrow from you. Now this last example of Jesus relates to our possessions being held as a stewardship from God and at the disposal of the real needs of those in our needs in our midst. Niriribyuk tayo at niririmay ng Panginoon with how we respond to others when confronted with this real and material needs. Although malimit din na mamisinterpret ito ng maraming mga tao because it is also wrong to give to all who ask without considering the person asking. Halimbawa, ang binibigyan mo pala isang drug or alcohol addict. Alam mong ang iyong binigay ay doon lang din mapunta. Then you are enabling this person to continue in their addicted lifestyle. Those who are lazy and dependent to the hard work of others, you're only enabling them to continue such kind of lifestyle. We are also to give discretion and wisdom, especially when your giving only leads to a deeper problem. In fact, the Bible in the Old Testament gives a low status to sluggards who fall into poverty from their own laziness. In Proverbs 6, sabi dito, How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? Tulog kayo ng tulog. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. And the Bible also regards as wicked for those who consistently seek loans and do not repay them. Sabi dito, the wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. But here, the context is your enemy or the wicked whom you should not resist. Genuine need man yun o hindi, magbayad man yun o hindi, tinuro ni, ni Jesus na magbigay. You know, ang punto ng katuroan ito ay hindi para sa kanila na humingi, kundi para sa atin na hinihingan. These words of Jesus is radical or radical because He removes the obligation of judging the merit of the request. In other words, give without question. And I believe ito yung tugatog ng pagiging mapagbigay. And this is lived out by Jesus Himself. In teaching this, we are actually made to reflect, especially that this radical principle became a vivid example for us. In Romans 5, 8, But God demonstrated His own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Ipinakita ng Diyos na sa Kanyang pagbibigay sa Kanyang bugtong na anak, wala ni isa ang karapat dapat. Pero binigay pa rin niya. We were sinners, we were unworthy, and yet He still gave His Son for us. So people of God, Jesus calls us to follow this teaching dahil iba ang ating pagkatawag. And this is the kind of righteousness that is defined in the, in the standard of God. And this last verse in the letter of Peter will cap this message today. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in His mouth. When they hurled their insults at Him, He did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins and in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. Jesus lived a perfect and righteous life. And that example is before us today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen.